I'd like to begin with a fact, a simple yet shocking fact. It is this. Pornography and sex deviation have always been with mankind. This is true. But now consider another fact. Never in the history of the world have the teachers of unnatural sex acts had available to them high-speed presses, rapid transportation, mass distribution, all have combined to put the vilest obscenity within reach of every man, woman, and child in the country. This traffic continues to increase and flourish for one reason. It is big business, profitable business. We describe it as dirt for money's sake. Obscene literature is a two billion dollar a year business. That's two billion dollars. Perversion for profit. The Military Chaplains Association of the United States, practically every major fraternal, civic, and religious organization, the juvenile court judges, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, innumerable psychiatrists, sociologists, and psychologists tell youngsters that it's smart, it's thrilling, it provides kicks to be a homosexual. A major factor that makes youngsters prime targets is the natural curiosity of youth about the mysterious force of sex. Well, at this point, my friends, I wish to make it clear that the examples that I'm about to show you were not bought on the sly from under the counter. They were not purchased on Skid Row or on the other side of the tracks. They can be bought openly by anyone in drugstores, groceries, delicatessens, terminals, malt shops, cigar stores, newsstands, all over the community. They can be purchased by children, whether in a small town like McAllen and the Rio Grande, or in Chicago, New York, or Los Angeles. A prime example of one major category are the so-called girly magazines which sell over 15 million copies a month. These highly colorful magazines picture stark nudity on slick paper. They often present their subject on bed. is the dwelling upon teenage participation in the God-given gift of sex. This is amply depicted by the pose of this obviously young girl, her clothes in the disarray of sexual activity, with the stimulus of alcohol indicated by the tumbler placed on her thigh. And again, the breast fetish. Note the sensual expression alluded to by Dr. Sorokin, the renowned Harvard sociologist, as being the hallmark of so much of contemporary photography. And then we come to nudist magazines. Group exposure is a hallmark of these cultists. However, it's been well stated that very few blind people join the nudist colonies. This mixture of male and female with Total anatomical detail is typical of these magazines. If they were printed only for the nudist cult, they would never exist. Their circulation would not support the cost of printing. And then the so-called physique group of publications. These magazines with a homosexual viewpoint and poses are often not understood by many youngsters who take them as instruction of body development. And here again, an appeal to the sodomist with a play upon the buttocks, the laced leather garment. 
Through this material, today's youth can be stimulated to sexual activity for which he has no legitimate outlet. Perversion for profit. before, but uh, you have to understand, in order for our show, uh, well, to really be a success, it has to appeal to many types of viewers. So uh, from time to time, we choose a group we feel we may be missing, and then we tailor a portion of our show to their specific needs. Folks, we call these segments Demographic Minutes, and uh, we thought we'd try another one right now. Tonight's demographic, 13-year-old boys. Very important. They watch a lot of TV. We want to win them over right now, so we're going to take a minute and do it. Liz, would you uh, please roll the tape? Your mother and I were shocked to find these dirty magazines under your bed. Don't you think it's about time you started watching videos? Hey man, that's bitchin' lead guitar. You wanna go on tour with us? Look, I don't mind that you went through my diary. As a matter of fact, you can go through all my girlfriend's diaries. I hope you don't mind staying after school. Can I touch the hair on your upper lip? Are you kidding? I want your autograph. Yeah, we know we're cool, but we have no leader. Can you help us? Oh, God, I love the way your voice cracks. My demographic. <laughs> <laughs> Just the kind of thing Bob Dole's talking about. Yeah, well, he's right. Go, Dole, go. All right, folks. We'll take a quick break. Let's help with that uh, little trick. <laughs> They're the guys playing yeah, with you. Oh, that's it. Yeah. 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 Well, we got Felix Cavallari from the Young Rascals. Mm -hmm. Groovin'. Does anybody remember Groovin'? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we got Mark. Ah. Randy Backman. <laughs> My son, Zach. Yeah! He yeah, always yeah. gets the biggest cheer. Yeah, you know, your son, your son uh, is a drummer, yeah. coincidentally. Yeah. Now, is he, this so is little... his brother. Really? Yeah, now, are they, do you find, are they influenced by you as a drummer? How does it work? Do you, who are they most influenced as by Well, drummer? Zach was most influenced by Keith. Really? Which is, well, he called him Uncle Keith, of course. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. Because he was his uncle. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> I'm glad there's a reason. Yeah, well, there's always a reason. I don't want to have to look into that. All right, now, uh, he uh, he was most influenced by Keith Moon, and, and what's it like playing with your son out there? It's great. Yeah. No, it's really fun. You know, you look over, you see your boy's got a job. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> He's not on the streets, you know what I mean? You know where he is. Well, That's the important. Tour's over, zip. Yeah, He's all right. on the drain again. Uh-huh, well, I saw you. I, I, I want to ask you something, because I saw the other day you were on uh, Donnie with Max and uh, what struck me is that you're kind of an opposition. So many people were asking you questions in the audience, big fans, and so many, they know more about you probably than you do. They knew stuff that you so, didn't know. You know they, they know have... your son's birthdays. Yes. They know well, all I know this that, stuff. But... <laughs> but you know they have that Beatle trivia pursuit. Trivial pursuit. They have a trivial pursuit game yeah. now? Yeah, and uh, one night we were playing it, and I couldn't answer a damn question. <laughs> <laughs> No. But all the other people, oh yeah, it was 1963, I know. Yeah. No, but it's amazing, because these people, they're such like, the knowledge is so intense. Oh. I have a friend uh, out in Los Angeles who, like me, is a, is a huge Beatles fan, but he has a whole wall, a whole wall of hundreds of just the, the bootleg 
records. Yeah. The <laughs> albums that so. are, you know, they're not authorized. Yeah. They got the tapes, they put them on CD. And it's just, it's you guys practicing, it's you guys. This guy knows everything. He has a CD how of you they guys. Get them? That's I don't know, I, I don't know how they get them. And uh, are you getting the money from those, by the way? No, because they're bootlegs. You don't get money when it's a bootleg. But I do have I all take the care bootlegs of that myself. All right, I will make sure, I will make sure that this guy pays you. Okay, your good. I will call him tonight. But he has one, he has one uh, record, which is you guys tuning up. That's all it is. It's like you guys, you know, you hear, you know, you hear I'm, you guys I'm just tune up it. your instruments. I'm not on that record. <laughs> oh man, what happened? I never tuned up. <laughs> just started just banging away. The uh -huh. That's the philosophy. That's my philosophy. When you get <laughs> so when you get the uh, when you get the the book Ringo Starr on drumming, it's just one page. Just one page. Just hit the bugger. <laughs> but right. hit him in time. Okay, I gotta watch for that now. I, I'm struck, you're, you're touring now. Things must have changed a lot since you started out, you know, touring with me. Has things little, changed a lot? It's a little quieter. Mm -hmm. uh, no, touring's the same. Touring's exactly you know, you got to get to the gig, you got to do the show, mm -hmm. and uh, then you got to get out. Because I, I've noticed, because I, I saw there was a, a documentary on recently, I was watching it, it was uh, the Beatles playing in 1964, and you're playing in the round. You're playing in a round amphitheater. Oh, in and you, Washington. Yeah, in Washington. <laughs> yeah. And you were on a round stage that sure. revolved. And should between, have gone around. Right, and it was supposed to go around. And in between the songs, you had to get off and you... Moved it and, myself. Yeah, and you guys had to move it yourself. Yeah. And it's like in the concert, yeah. and you're looking yeah. like you're giving yourself a hernia. Well, turning this thing around. Well, I was like, help the man. These are the biggest people in show business. Help them. Well, that's showbiz for you, you see. <laughs> the you show must to, go on. So. Yeah. Uh, but now you have people down. move it for you. Well, you know? now I don't go around. Since that gig, I've never gone around. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you learn. That's it. You learn. I'm you not going around again. these little clues as you go along. Uh-huh. You learn that. That's very important. Yeah. Good. That's another good rule. Hit the bugger. Don't go around. Yeah, right. That's right. <laughs> All right. Now, I know we, uh, when, when I saw you on the, on the, uh, show. Yeah, you're just following my career. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm uh, sorry about that. I'll calm down. But, uh. I noticed that, that uh, you were on the show with Max, and drummers, am I wrong, but drummers seem to have a special camaraderie. I mean, you're friends with Max. Max is friends uh, with lots of drummers. Is it? Not just you. Oh, no, I'm... Now I ruined it. No, just you. <laughs> <laughs> just you. But he, he's well, friends with lots of drummers, and you, you don't see bass players hanging around together, really, do you? Yeah. Really? Yeah, no so one this... else would hang out with them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. You have balls to hang out with. Look at that. No one hangs out with. No one hangs out with Angelo. You know, bass so players gone? always get. Well, John's hard to hang out with. He's dead. So you okay. just have to shout, John, how are you doing? <laughs> he says, Oh, 1015. Ron <laughs> again. Uh huh. All right. Well, listen. John's a good man. Hey, but it worked. Hey, that's all that matters. <laughs> Who cares? Can you hang on one second? We're going to do a commercial. Sure. All right. We're going to have more with Ringo Starr in just a second when we come back. Stick around, folks. We'll see you in a minute. commercial break i heard this is according to your wife who, who's backstage she says you just got your your first bra thrown at you during the show is that true that's true <laughs> <laughs> this is right so congratulations well that's thank right. you i think that... <laughs> come on the man got a bra thrown at him. i thought it was a, a blind person who thought it might be tom jones <laughs> no no it was you it was you yeah, i wanted to ask a little you... late mind you but, uh... <laughs> no a bra's a bra i'll take these things this is conan out. yeah we can have the audience here tell you bras I've been trying. Come I on, asked. girls. Come on. Girl. No, stop. Look at that. No reaction. What happened? <laughs> They're like, all right, if we have to. Come on. Now, uh, you mentioned uh, you mentioned Keith Moon in the last segment. I, I wanted to follow up on that because I used to be a very bad drummer. I was very influenced by you, very influenced by Keith Moon. And I'm, I'm curious about him as a person. You guys you guys hung out a lot. You we did. Friends. We hung out a lot. He was a really good friend. Mm -hmm. And as I said before, I was like, I'm close to my friend. Mm -hmm. And, and he's got a reputation for being such an incredible wild man. Is that when the two of you would get together, would things happen? He was he was pretty wild. Mm -hmm. um, we had a lot of uh, hairy incidents. <laughs> Care to share just one for a, a drum enthusiast well, like me? The one about where he, he ate the Cadillac. 
he ate a Cadillac? Well, he tried. <laughs> <laughs> I think just trying would be a little weird. He, yeah. was, he was a little angry with Harry Nelson and I. And, uh, mm -hmm. We were stealing his car. And, uh, <laughs> it, doesn't, it sounds like he's not time. the only one who was misbehaving. Yeah, well, <laughs> no, we were like... all a little, uh -huh. a little uh, happy that night. Uh huh. Okay. And so anyway, by the time he got into his car, we were going down this person's drive. He just proceeded to eat the uh, upholstery. Because that was he's actually angry? tried to strangle me. <laughs> I know it's me, Keith. Hello, it's me. How can friend. you eat upholstery? Well, he has very strong teeth. He yeah. just. Oh, <laughs> and the rest. Oh, the rest. All right, I'm just, picture it now. You know, Thank you. He just ripped that car apart. Uh huh. So it's it's all true then. Stuff that you saw that you didn't even remember? There must be. There's lots of stuff I didn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a crazy time where you see it and there you are no, and it's happening saying, but you don't no, recall it? Because, you know, when you're doing it, you don't think, oh, I better remember this. They'll be showing it 200 years later. Right, right. You know, you're just like we living, don't have that living here, your yeah. life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh -huh. Just carrying on. Then suddenly, you know, like the Trivial Pursuit. Oh, in 1963, you did this. Oh, I don't mm -hmm. you know. I didn't know. I had to remember all of that. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, there's a lot of footage. I mean, mainly it's uh, it's the three of us talking, it's the three of us becoming friendly again. Um, you know, we're interviewed separately and then we're interviewed together. We've done uh, a couple of numbers for the, for the right. thing with, some with John. So it's not really new, but it, it'll be new to you. It was new to me. I hadn't heard mm -hmm. it either. What was that like? To, you, you did it to a track that uh, John did in yeah, the so found a cassette of songs that hadn't been out. Mm -hmm. We picked uh, one to put us on top, and it was it was, it was pretty strange. You know? Yeah, it was pretty emotional and pretty strange that uh, he wasn't there. Mm -hmm. You know, and we were going in to do what the four of us did very, very well, which was make a record. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have his voice, and then we put everything else on top, mm -hmm. and it turned out great. Well, we're all oh, really everyone's got to be quiet. <laughs> yeah. No, well, we're all. Needless to say, many people are, are really looking forward to seeing oh, it. It's, it's really cool. It's, it's really coming cool. out in the fall. Uh, you're at uh, Radio City <laughs> tomorrow tomorrow night, and that's a show I'm going to make, and, and people should really try and make it. All over the East Coast the next couple of weeks. Uh, that's this side of America. And then uh -huh. in August, we're on the West Coast. That's the other side the of other America. The other side of America. Now that's in, if you're watching in L.A., it's in reverse. <laughs> <laughs> This helps. This, this helps. helps. Our well, fans... if you're watching in LA, you have to tell them. <laughs> um... <laughs> Get them! Well, it was, uh... Ringo, you have, you have no idea what a thrill it was to have you on the show, and, and best of luck with the rest of the tour. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Ringo! Ringo! Ringo!
house have many broken windows, little children laying in the street. My wife has calmed me down a bit, though, you know. What's she like? What does she like? No, what is she like? Oh, what's she like? Uh, me. She likes me. Uh, no, I know what your question was. I'm not an idiot. What is she like? Uh, she's very much of a homebody. She's a country girl, you know. She, she doesn't know from all that stuff. That's good. I mean, like it's rather done. dull, actually. No. <laughs> no, I think it gives you balance. Yes, it's good. It's a stable home life paired with an unstable, crazy show business career. Did you think you would get married so young? I mean, was that part of your game plan? I had no life? idea. It's like the old story. It happens when you least expect it. Boy, you're in love, you know. It's nice. Yeah, it's very nice. How does it feel to be a father? Great. Better than it feels being a mother, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it feels good. I love it. You know, I just don't want to stick Junior on my son. You know, he's saying Freddie, Freddie James Prince, but I don't want to stick Junior on him because then, then he just got to be like me, and I wouldn't wish that on my enemy. Why not? I'm crazy. I think that's better, don't you? No, no, it's nice to be sane for a change. But not ordinary. No, not ordinary. No, very Unique, funny. but not crazed. Not mad. Your son, uh... His father has money and recognition and all of that. Do you think that's going to be hard for him to focus the way you did? No, I ain't going to spoil him. He's, uh, he's going to have to make believe he doesn't have any of that. How can he do that? How can he keep him spoiling? Punch him in the head a couple of times. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. No, uh, just tell him about it. You know, keep him in perspective. Keep, just keep telling him, hey, hey, you know. Nobody gave this to me, and nobody's going to give it to you. You know, like, naturally, we always want our children to have a better life than we had. And I will make certain things easier. There's certain things that it's not necessary for him to go through, and if I can prevent him from going through it, I will. But I'm going to make sure he has values. You know, life is not a freebie. What, what do you think you'll be able to give him that you didn't have? Trouble. <laughs> lots of trouble. Jokes. Lots of material. Uh, I don't know. Courage. When you, you were 16, what's that? Bear with me for a second. When I was 16. What did you want the most? I don't worry. And do you have it? Success. Okay. Yeah, success. Whatever I did, and yes, I have it. Does it match your expectations? Yes. It's gone far beyond. How? I didn't think it would happen so soon or to the magnitude it did. Except your success came so fast. Didn't it scare you a little? At first. I mean, it wouldn't mean. At first, you know, I, I plan, I, I'm, a, I'm a rusher anyway. You know, I rush everything in my life. Uh, yeah, it came fast, but the first six months were hard to deal with because here I was in Hollywood. All of a sudden, people knew me. I was in 60 million homes every Friday night. It got a little scary, and then I just said, hey, this is what I wanted. So what am I worried about? And then it became easy. Did that mean you felt a little guilty at first? No, not guilty. I mean in a Friday. Not guilty, episode. just... Wow, where did all this come from all of a sudden? And someone will come and pull, virtually pull the food out of their mouth and say, sign this. You know, I think there's a, there's a line, you know, where you shouldn't be rude to somebody. That even though they're a performer, they're a person, too. Like, uh, uh, put it this way, I, I, I love, you know, like uh, Marlon Brando. But if Marlon Brando fell off a motorcycle and is laying there bleeding, I would go, Mr. Mr. Before the ambulance comes, could you sign it? I, that's rude. I wouldn't do that. You know, but I love to sign autographs and say hello to people and walk through neighborhoods and rap with folks, you know. That's what I like about Muhammad Ali. He's a world's heavyweight champ, but he's still of the people. He still gets out in the street and says hello to people, whether they be winos or rich. You know, he can go from the lowest to the highest, and he's still the same man. Well, that's called integrity. I mean, he
singing now. Whatever. Going on up there. If you don't, I'm going to call the cops. <laughs>